Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new Quilty Box video. I just received my Quilty Box for April 2017 and it's filled with fun gear from Jennifer Moore. So let's check out what she included in the box and what we're going to make together this month. Just in case you've never heard of Quilty Box, basically this is a box of fun gear that arrives every month. And the items in the box are always picked by a different designer. So this month's box was put together by Jennifer Moore and you can find her website at monaluna.com. So let's check out what came this month. We've got a bottle of Flatter. This is a kind of a starch alternative that will help stabilize your fabrics. Then we've got some beautiful so fine thread. This is superior threads and I love that they put what needle to use right on the top of the spool. So it says use an 80-12 top stitch needle. That's really handy. We've got another little charm. If you subscribed to Quilty Box two months ago, uh, we got a little rabbit charm. So this month we have a bear charm. I think that's really cool. And you know, I feel like I need to get a charm bracelet <laughs> to put all these on. We also have this cute quilt pattern and it makes this really nice graphic tulip uh, quilt. I think that's really cute. And of course the fabrics. This is always the best part and I always force myself to go on ahead and unwrap it and pull all the fabrics out. I don't know about you but I tend to be a fabric hoarder and if I don't unwrap it then I will leave it in its pretty package. So I've got to unwrap it and look at all these pretty fabrics. So we've got this really nice graphic red print and then this is kind of a larger scale uh, blue and it's not quite navy blue. It's a little lighter than that. I like that. It's almost like denim is, is the color it reminds me of. Then this triangle print. It's almost an optical illusion. That kind of does something funny to my eyes. <laughs> and then here we've got, uh, this looks like we've got bears and hedgehogs and foxes. Just a lot of really pretty animals. And I think this one's my favorite. I just love how simple this is. It's just a sim super, super simple leaf design. I really like that one. And then we've got a lighter print with just bears. And then this is tulips. And then another large scale with berries. So beautiful fabrics to play with this month. I'm gonna turn the camera off and do a little thinking and planning and figure out what we're gonna make with this beautiful selection of fabrics. So I've taken some time to look at our beautiful fabrics and get them prepped up. I pre-washed, starched, and pressed them and cut them into squares because we're going to be making this mega pinwheel star quilt. So this is based off of a design that we've made before and that was the twin rainbow star. This time we're only going to make one quilt and it's going to be super sized. So you're going to need some really big blocks. The first step to creating this quilt is to make some huge half square triangles. So I'm gonna match my navy blue print fabric with a piece of white background fabric. And if you need the exact cutting sizes and stuff, you can find this in the quilt pattern. So make sure to check that out. And what we're gonna do is layer this on top really nicely, right sides together. And then you're gonna need a really long ruler. This is a six by 24. And I'm gonna lay it on here, corner to corner, and mark a diagonal line. And you want it nice, flat, and straight. Just like that. And I'm marking with a water-soluble blue pen. This is my favorite pen for marking light fabrics. If you are, were marking from the other side with dark fabrics, I recommend the Fonz & Porter ceramic marking pencil. So that looks good. Now I'm gonna take a second and put some pins in this because these squares are so big, they're going to tend to kind of shift apart. So just a few pins along these edges will really help with that. Now that looks good. I'm gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch to either side of that center marked line. So I have my squares stacked together and that center line marked. I'm gonna slip it underneath my presser foot. I'm using a quarter inch presser foot here so I get a nice accurate quarter inch seam. So I'm just lining up the edge of that foot with that center marked line. And I'm just gonna try and stay on the edge of that line and stitch nice and straight. Now these squares are so large that as I stitch into the center, the square is not going to really fit in the arm of the machine. So I'm going to roll this side up a little bit. This is why I penned the squares together. 
because I know that they would shift if I did this, uh, if I rolled it up like this and didn't pen it. So just slow and steady wins the race. Uh, I have lowered my stitch length to 1.5 millimeters. So I'm producing a nice tight stitch. It's gonna be really secure. Even though we're working with really big pieces in this quilt, we wanna make sure that they're really well stitched together and those seams are gonna be really secure. So the neat thing about this quilt is the pieces are so big uh, and the seams are so long. And so you kind of get a lot of bang for your buck. You don't have to do as many seams uh, or as much piecing or cutting, but you know, every seam that you stitch is gonna take forever. <laughs> so if this is seeming a little long, it's cause it is. This is a pretty big piece. Okay, so I'm coming near the end and I wanna make sure to stay right on that line as I stitch off. And then I use a little scrap charger. This is just something that I do in order to kind of just reduce the long thread tails that are always floating around my machine. I just stitch straight from one piece and back onto a scrap, just like that. And then I'm able to clip off my block. And this also reduces your bobbin thread waste so you don't end up with you know, lots of really long thread tails that waste a lot of bobbin thread. Okay, so I'm gonna just turn my block around, get situated again, line it up. I'm just using my knee lifter here to lift my presser foot up slightly slide the block underneath and I'm going to start stitching and again I'm stitching a quarter of an inch from that center mark line and in doing this I'm just trying to stay right on that line just keep it lined up and maintain my focus and then of course just manage a little bit of the bulk it's such a big square just want to make sure that it doesn't get caught up in the machine and my stitches stay nice and straight and even the cool thing about working with such big blocks is you, know, you really start to kind of get into the groove of, of piecing. I find when I have lots of itsy bitsy pieces, that can be a little distracting. But you know, when you've got these nice long seams, it really gives you a chance to relax. I really hope that you enjoy creating these really big half square triangles. Okay, so we're nearing the end of this one. And I'm gonna grab that scrap again and stitch right back onto it. And I usually have three or four of these floating around my table at any given time, so I don't have to always be looking for it and clipping. It's just kind of a nice thing to be able to keep your stitches organized. So the next step is to remove all of those pens, and then we're gonna cut our half square triangles apart. So normally with smaller half square triangles, I can do that with a pair of scissors. With a big half square triangle like this, I'm definitely gonna grab my ruler and rotary cutter. So I'm taking that nice long rectangular ruler again, lining it up here, just corner to corner, right on that marked line, and I cut straight across. So there we go. We have two jumbo half square triangles. So the next step here is to flip it over and finger press the seam allowance open. The reason why I piece with a really short stitch length, 1.5 millimeters, is so I can press my seam allowances open. And that might be different from what you've heard from somebody else. I like my seam allowances open because it makes the quilt flatter and easier to quilt over and I can stitch right in the ditch. Uh, I also think it makes my blocks a little bit more accurate. So for all of those reasons, I piece with a short stitch length and press my seam allowances open. So I'm gonna do that with these half square triangles and I'm gonna complete all of my half square triangles at this point. You have quite a few to make for the quilt. So take your time and catch up with me and then I'll show you how to trim them up next. One last step before trimming down our blocks, we're going to press that seam allowance open with a hot dry iron. I just wanna make sure that it's nice and flat and uh, crisply pressed down. So you can press from the back and from the front. Now it's time to trim our half square triangle down to the correct size. And this is one of those things that's kind of tricky. When we work with a bigger shape, you're gonna need a bigger ruler and be really careful to cut this accurately. Now, one thing, I do not use the lines on my rotary cutting mat to trust. 
A lot of quilters will do that and it it's just a little ever so slightly off. Usually the lines are thicker and uh, it's really easy to make a bad cut and it's also not nearly as accurate as cutting with your ruler. So for all of those reasons, I just get a really big ruler <laughs> and use that to cut. So this is an 18 and a half inch square ruler. I've lined up the 45 degree line with that diagonal seam line and I'm only gonna be shaving off about an eighth of an inch from all sides. So I've centered it up and I'm gonna work one side at a time. I've trimmed off that side. And this is the thing that's a little time consuming. You wanna rotate your block every time. And so now I've trimmed this side so that needs to be flush with the edge of the ruler and that 45 degree line needs to be lined up perfectly in the center too. So it's gonna take a little while to uh, cut and then reposition. And it's important to reposition because if you try and cut up and over, you have a really good chance of cutting yourself. That's how I had a really bad rotary cutting accident last year. Uh, I was kind of just kind of um, cutting a lot of corners, <laughs> literally, and uh, cut across the top of my ruler and the rotary cutter skipped right up over the ruler and cut the end of my finger off. Now, of course, it grew back, but it was really painful and it really cut into my quilting time, so watch out for that. Uh, just cut the side that lines up with your dominant hand and take the time to rotate the block with each cut. The next step is to arrange all of your half square triangles to create the mega pinwheel star quilt. As you can see, I laid mine out on the floor and figured out how I wanted to arrange all my half square triangles. And now I'm gonna start piecing them together in rows. So this is so big that I can't really get it all in the same shot, but here you can see this is one of our big half square triangles and just a plain square of fabric A. I'm gonna flip over the half square triangle and get this lined up. You wanna take your time and make sure that these edges are in nice alignment you go to the machine and stitch this with a quarter inch seam allowance. So here at the machine, I'm just taking a minute to make sure that these edges are in nice alignment. And I always like to start when piecing half square triangles with a bulky seam allowance feeding into the machine first. And that just ensures that uh, it's any kind of slipping and sliding that happens, I'm gonna kind of take care of it right at the beginning rather than having it push forward at the end. So that's just a little tip. I, I just think that sometimes if you have a seam that's gonna be bulky at any point in time, make sure to stitch through that first and get it secured so it's not gonna slide on you. So now the rest of the seam is a nice long seam. Uh, and the best thing to do is to just stop about every three to four inches, just like I am, uh, lift the fabric on the top and align those two edges right on top of one another. You don't want one sliding out from under the other. I'm gonna keep them stacked up just exactly on top of one another. And so I do a lot of stopping and starting like this. It is a little slow, you know, I wanna just really take my time and make sure that it's not going to go together incorrectly. So just be mindful of that. Once you get down a little bit further, I start taking a look at the edges, the bottom edges, and I make sure that those are gonna end up in nice alignment too. So I stack that corner right on top of itself and then I just press really hard with my index finger here. And it's almost like pinning. I'm pressing really firmly and just encouraging those fabrics to go together just exactly right. You could put a pin in it if you want to, but I think this works good too. So that's how I'm gonna piece all of my blocks together into rows and then I'll piece the rows together into the finished quilt. So here is our finished mega pinwheel star. I love how this came out. And as you can see, it is a big quilt. This is 64 inches at this point. And if you wanna make it bigger, you can always add borders, extra fabric around it, and you could bump it up to a twin, king, or queen if you want to. So I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make this. You can find the pattern at leahday.com slash megastar. If you'd like to learn more about Quilty Box and how to get a box of fun gear and beautiful fabrics every month, you can check it out in the link below this video. I love challenging myself to come up with something totally new every single month. And I think this quilt came out great. I hope you enjoy making it too. Until next time, let's go quilts.